This is going to sound good right here. Well, we're diving into our V-bottom project. Uh, we're in a designated space for it. I've got my patron board right here beside me. Uh, you know, you could check that out anytime you want, but the real thing I'm here for is to get going fitting this side planking together. Now, this is the first side that I fit together right here, and you can see it's got a few clamps on it, but it's nice and tight. It fits really, really nice. Uh, this right here would be the starboard side of the boat. This is the first plank going on near the chine right here, and then the others will add to that. But uh, and I, where I build it, it'll actually be on the port side, on the port side, because uh, I'm going to flip the boat over. So when we're building it, the port is starboard, and the starboard is port. So I, you know, it's a little tricky. But uh, you know, I'm going to get started playing in these two pieces right here. I'm going to show you two methods of fitting these planks together. One's considerably easier than the other, but I welcome them both, so let me get started and show you exactly how to go about it. This plane is an aluminum number six, which you don't see very often, but I kind of like aluminum planes, and uh, I want to show you how it's adjusted. What I'm doing here is getting the blade to be exactly the same height on both sides. That's whether it's below the deck or above the deck, but I've got a little tiny bit of below the deck where it won't cut if I were to try to use it. So what you want to do is put your head behind the plane and look down the distance of this table and get that glare in your eyes and then adjust the angle and basically looking at that glare shows you whether or not the blade is up any higher on one side or the other then you can just adjust your angle with this little lever in the back of the plane right here and uh, that's part of it. Then I'm going to take and use it and see how it cuts. First I want to show you my setup here. Now, like I said, I want to fit this plank to this plank. So what I want to do first is to get the edge of this one nice and straight. And uh, you've seen me do this before, I think, on a bench, but it was for a different purpose. Uh, I can't plane that. If I put that in a bench vise or something like that and held the plane by hand, I'd never get the thing 90 degrees. I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't get it straight. I wouldn't get it 90 degrees. And I know there's attachments for the plane that planes it, or makes it plane at 90 degrees. But they're very hard to use. It just doesn't work out real well. So I wouldn't want the plank on edge anyhow. It'd be flapping all over the place. I need it trained down. So I put it on these sleepers. These are just two by sixes that are laid on the floor so that I don't have the boards right on the floor. Now, this one that I'm going to plane, I've got it jacked up higher than the other one with an extra two by sitting there like that. Now, Basically, what I'm going to do is lay the plane on this one, which is laying nice and flat on the sleeper. And I've got this one spaced up, and I'm going to kneel on this one. So what's going to happen is the two of them are going to be laying right down as flat as can be. And when I slide the plate along, I'm not only going to plane it straight, but I'm going to have it at nice 90 degrees perfectly. So that's the idea. Now, uh, then I'm going to interchange the pieces and put this one on top of this one. Uh, First, before I even do that, I'm going to clamp the pieces together and see what's going to happen to this one. If I can actually plane it to fit this one or not. It may be too far away, and then I'm going to have to use a different method. But uh, let's try this. Now, before I get started, I'm going to have to set my blade depth. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Look at that. Nothing. It won't cut. So I'm just going to take and uh, turn that wheel up a little bit, try it some more. No. Oh, there we go. Right there like that. Now, I can go from one end to the other. So, that's one pass. Now, I've made a couple of passes on it already, so that's the last time I'm going to have to do this on that board right there. Now, I'm going to lower this one down alongside this one to see how it fits, how the two made up. 
Now, I haven't even looked at that before, so this will be kind of a surprise to me. Exactly. This was cut nice and straight before I had snapped a line on it or stretched a line and then nailed a batten alongside the line. So I ripped it nice and straight. But it's like anything else. You rip it nice and straight. If you take anything off the board, then the board will edge set itself a little bit. It's open on that end. It's also open on this end. So this piece is nice and straight, but this piece right here has a curve to it. And I don't think I want to plane all of that out of it because that's quite a bit. And I'd be there for quite a while. You know, if it was very, very close, then I could use a different method. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this piece up three quarters of an inch. So it's up there just like that. Then I'm going to use this edge to guide my skill saw and I'm going to cut this board. Uh, my saw cuts a half an inch from the line. So without wasting any material, I can separate that end a half an inch and I can separate that end a half an inch. But first off, let's jack it up where it belongs and go from there. Now I've taken the inch and a half spaces out from underneath the board and I'm putting three quarter inch spaces back under there. I want them to stick out and extend all the way across the board that I'm trying to support because I want them to stick out because I want to nail them down to the sleepers and then I'm going to nail the board to the spacer because I don't want the board shuffling around or anything like that. I don't want that board moving and I don't want the board that I'm cutting moving so I'm going to reach across the board and nail those down as well. So, you know, I'm going to put about four nails the length of it and they're not very big and they're not in there very deep so, you know, it's really holding it just from kind of sliding around. Now I'm going to pick up my skill saw and make a rip, just like I said, but you can see there's been some modifications to the saw. It cuts a half an inch away from the edge. So, you know, it's just a modification that I'm taking advantage of right now. So I don't have to separate the boards quite a bit like the saw would be if I used it in a stock form. It'd be cutting like an inch and a quarter away from the edge of the table. So this is kind of nice. It makes it a little bit easier. And uh, basically, I'm just gonna push it from one end to the other. And it's pretty simple to do once you get it set up. It's the setup that, that, that makes this work really, and the saw cuts nice and 90 degrees, and it comes out perfect. You just go from one end to the other, and then take your piece out and throw it away. Well, it clamped together really nice in the middle there. I'm gonna put a clamp down this end, and I think you'll see that the other end is actually a little bit open. And the reason for that is, is because it, it cut perfectly parallel to this board, but what happens when you even cut a quarter inch off or a half an inch off of one of these boards, it starts to set. It edge sets itself a little bit after you've cut it, so that's why it's open down there. But that's a very, very small amount of edge set, even in a board this wide. So it takes very little amount of pressure to pull that together. Yeah, I've la added the last clamp, and uh, boy, look how it fits. It's just absolutely perfect, one end to the other. 25 feet long, and it fits perfect. You can't improve that with a plane or do anything to that to get that thing to fit any better than that. You know, it's got a little texture on it because I ripped it with a saw. This one's smooth because I planed it, but I don't need to plane that again to get that texture off. It's almost invisible, really. Yeah, it just it just pleases me because I didn't have to work at that awfully hard. Maybe the planing was the hardest part, and the rest of it is really just a little organization and running down there with a the skill saw. Now, I don't know if there's any other way to do it, but that's the easiest way I could ever come up with. And, uh, you know, like I say, these are skiff planks. They're not going to be altered in width or tapered on the ends or anything like that. They go on the boat exactly like this fit exactly opposite of each other. I'll put some reference marks across, especially up forward where I first sat, fasten them on. I want to make sure that the two planks don't go this way any real serious amount because then it wouldn't fit exactly right. I can't tell you that that's perfectly straight, but I can tell you that it fits perfectly. 
So uh, that's the way you do it right there. Now I've got to check this other side of this one for straight, or a few different things, and then I'm going to match it to the next plank. I know why planing is so satisfying to me, because I know it's going to come out exactly right. The method that I'm using right here is what makes it come out right. All I had to do is really think it up, and the rest is just taking some muscle and using the plane properly. It has to be set at the right depth and kinds of things like that, but you know, once you get something like this down pat, anybody could really accomplish the same thing. Now I've got these two pieces clamped together. I haven't sawn this board with a skill saw. I'm going to do this with just a plane. Now, they both have a little edge set in it. Without these clamps, there'd be a gap in the center here, but it's very, it's very easy to make that edge set. Very, very easy. So I clamp them together. Now I'm taking a look at them, and uh, what I have to do is decide where the tight spots are with still a very small amount of pressure. And then I'll, I'll mark the tight spots by just taking some d dust like this, some shavings, and I can see it's a little loose here, a little loose over here. I'm just going to put that right there because I'm going to do a little bit more plane in there. Uh, now I'm going to put one here. That looks great. And it's also touching tightly on the very end here. So I'm going to put a little pile of shavings right there. I'm going to do a little planing up in here, right there on this board. Gap, little planing in here. And never mind do I have to take some off to make it fit. I have to plane the whole length of it because I want to make sure it's nice and square. This one's nice and square. I've already planed it square. This one's not square yet, so I'm going to plane it to fit and also plane it nice and square all at the same time. So it's got a little gap right in here. I could probably pull that up pretty easily with a clamp, but it's forced nice and tight on the end, so I think what I'm going to do is plane a little bit off of it right down here. That'll make it go together easier. Now I'm going to take a few swipes in there and a few swipes wherever it touches, really nice and tight. So I'm going to take inch and a half spaces and I'm going to put them right under here. Now, I don't want them sticking out over there, so I'm going to pull them back about a half an inch just like that. Now, here's another one. Put that one right in here. spaces under it and see how that fits. That closed it up quite a bit, but there's a little bit more to take off before I get rid of this space right here. So I'm just going to pick it up again, like so. Take a little bit more off this end. that so much different I could take another pass a little gap here I'm gonna take a little off right in here but it's actually just a shadow because one plank is above the other a little tiny bit. This is actually very good along here, quite good. All the way up until the very end, it needs a little relief right up there, maybe a tiny bit right near this clamp right here.
I've got a little bit more to go on the end right here. Now I've slammed it together here and it looks pretty good right in here. It's got a little gap in it up in here. So I've taken a little bit off there. I didn't get down as far as I should have. I'm gonna plane a little bit more off in here. So I'm gonna jack it up again, just like that. Better and better every time. Now, I'll tell you, it may be good enough just like that. I'm going to put a clamp on this loose spot, and if it clamps up really nice and tight, that'll be pretty much it. If it doesn't, I'll find a spot where it's too big, and I'll hit it one more time. So there's our second side clamped together right there. This is the first one I did right here, and you can see it just fits beautiful, one end to the other with just a few clamps on it, and very, very little pressure, like I said. The edge is a nice and square edge, just like I did on this one. This one, I showed you two ways to fit it. This was a saw fit right here, where I just sawed one off the other. And even after I sawed it, I explained to you, even if you take off a half an inch, or an inch, especially, that plank's gonna take a set. So it's been fit, but when you clamp it together, they'll have to be set back in order to fit perfectly. So then I did this one by just edging this one here first, and then I did this fit with just a plane. I had this one above the other one. I was using this one here as what they call a shooting board because I've got my plane on its side right here, and I'm shooting down that board right there, holding the plane down nice and flat. That makes this edge be 90 degrees perfectly. So that's the idea. You want them 90 degrees and you want them to fit. So I planed at the tighter spots to get the looser spots to come together. And it didn't take very little effort, really. I didn't have to carry any of the planks to a bench or do anything like that. I just got on my hands and knees, which really wasn't very uncomfortable at all, and, uh, and do a little planing, a little fit, a little plane, a little fit and it just worked out perfectly. So there we go. These planks are gonna be put on that side of the boat when the boat's upside down, and these ones are gonna be on that side. We have to stack them up so we can get at this plank and that plank first. They're the first ones on the boat. Then we'll make these two accessible, and then these will be underneath those, and these are the shear planks. Actually, it's gonna have a little piece of plank above that to get to the shear at the bow, but back aft, it's high enough. And uh, the other thing I'd like to say is this one's not even parallel. This is a tapered plank. It's much wider down there than it is up here. Same thing with this one right here. So, uh, you know, that's a little bit different, but it's nice because I don't have to add a piece at the shear back aft. It's going to be cut. The shear will be cut in this plank except for up forward, maybe from here forward. So that's what we're going to do with that. We're going to put those pieces away. And the other thing I want to say to you is I've got a tool over here that... Uh, I'd love to have somebody identify it. Now this tool, most people would call a slick, and it is a slick. It's not a chisel, some people would call it that. There's another name for it that I've heard a few times, quite a few times. Uh, I just wonder if anybody could come up with that name uh, so that I would know that I wasn't just hearing things. Uh, if you come up with a name for it other than a slick or a chisel, I would send it to us in comment and uh, we're going to give you a little prize for whoever can come up with that name. So this thing was hand forged. You can tell very easily by looking at it right up in here. It's been crumpled right down in here by forging it very nicely. It does have a name in it right here, but it's a little bit vague, hard to see it. It's got a nice handle that a friend of mine turned for me, and I use it quite a bit. It's a great tool. Come on, come up with a name for it.